Well, my name is Marilyn Jane Mitchell, and my parents, especially my mom, married, made, called. Okay, <laughs> can we start again? Yeah. I'm Marilyn Jane Mitchell, Eastburn, and uh, when I was born, my mother chose the name Marilyn for me because she had seen it in a in a newspaper. And she, when she saw the name, she just thought, "Oh, when I have a girl, I'm going to call her Marilyn." So I'm Marilyn Jane. My name is Donald Lee Eastburn. I got my name Donald from, I think it was a relative, way back east, boy that was a long time ago, and my folks used his name for me. Uh, and I was born in Albany, Oregon in 1928. I was born in Portland in 1929. Well, I did have a nickname. I, I didn't like it. I was very little for my age. And so one time um, I went to Bible camp. In fact, I went five years in a row. But the first time we went, they decided to give everybody a nickname. And that time, Blondie and Dagwood the, was real popular. And so I got the name of Baby Dumpling. And so that carried with me over the five years that I went to camp. So I finally surpassed it. <laughs> yeah, I think I was called Easty a lot. Mm -hmm. And then when I went to college, I, uh, we had uh, these fights between the upper class and lower class. And, and apparently I got pretty involved in those and uh, was uh, struggling a little better than I thought I could. So I got the name Mighty Mouse. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> and I, then, then, I, then that reverted to Mouse, of course. So, but uh, yeah, that was about it. Well, my first job was babysitting for 25 cents an hour. But my first real job was uh, downtown Portland. Uh, and I worked for the, the head lady, Dorothy that was in charge of the parks. And I loved my job. And that's a job I had before I went to college for a few months. My goodness, I had a lot of jobs. Before I even started grade school, mom would take us out into the hop field, any field, and uh, we, we worked very hard. I remember my first year, I made enough money, to, my brother and I did, to buy jackets. Man, we pr treasured those jackets. That was really something. Then, then I started a lawnmower service business. I had uh, two or three fellows working for me. And we'd mow an entire yard for 25 cents, do the trimming and all for another dime. Then I got a job in a barber shop. So I could go on and on. I've had several jobs, but that was good. That was good. I made 25 cents a day in the barbershop and spent 10 cents on a movie, mm -hmm. put 10 cents in the bank, had five cents left for a bag of popcorn. And, uh, oh, I know. I, I, 25 cents for a whole day in the barbershop cleaning up and so on. I finally realized, you know, I could make a little more if I shine shoes. So I got, I fixed up a shoe shine kit, but I didn't, I didn't check things out ahead of time because most guys that came in for a shine had just walked through the auction barn, which was right next to us. And you can kind of imagine what kind of a mess their shoes were in, but I worked hard. But I made more money doing that than just working in the barbershop. <laughs> well, I'll start first <laughs> because Surprise. I love our story. <laughs> I love our story. I mean, we feel like we really are supposed to meet. I was all set to go to Willamette University with one of my best friends from high school in Salem. And then just before, I mean, like it was a month before, I went, you know what? 
you know, if I go with her, then I'll kind of be with my other high school friends, and I want to go and meet all new people. So I changed my mind and and uh, went to the University of Oregon. In the meantime, Dom was at Oregon State. Yeah, that was I had planned to st stay there, right? I and I knew I'd make the freshman baseball team. <laughs> I can say that now, <laughs> mm -hmm. but uh, then all of a sudden the, the uh, athletic department said we can't have a freshman baseball team because of all the servicemen coming back from World War II, so they're going to have a JV, and I knew that meant a lot more contestants, and I thought, well, that's good, the tougher the competition, the better, so we had one day of tryouts, which was amazing. I couldn't believe it. I was trying out for shortstop, but there was only one other person trying out for a shortstop. And uh, I got two hits, no errors. He got no hits and a couple of errors. And the coach picked him. My life was over. I mean, I, I really loved uh, the sports and uh, so I, I went back to the locker room with me and my mitt. I think that'd make a good book title. Mm -hmm. And I, did, I didn't realize that then. I, found, I realized later on, you know, in life, it's not always what you know. Many times it's who you know. And this coach and this other player I was competing with were very good friends. And I realized, hey, that they were in the service together. And I, well, I, that I understand. In fact, in fact, Marilyn and I were traveling across country years later after we were married. I looked up ahead and about 10 rows ahead was this fella and his wife and it looked like the, the coach. I wish I had done this. I almost walked up there and gave him a big hug and said, I'm sure glad you didn't pick me because I would have stayed at Oregon State and we would probably never have met. So that was, I just figured that was a, uh, that was one of, uh, one of God's winks. Yeah, well, and, and how we met was, you know, at, <clears throat> during those times, they would set you up with dates all the time. And so this one uh, gal that was in my sorority, she thought, we want to fix you up with this date, this guy from uh, the ATO house. And I went, no, I don't want to go because my brother had been in that fraternity, although he had graduated. But I didn't want him to be known as Bob's little sister. See, I'm real conscious of, be, you know. And so, and Don wasn't excited to go. No, I didn't want to go. Yeah. Uh, no. But finally, they kept saying, come on, come on. And so we finally did it. And I said, as long as I don't have to take her any place afterwards. It was a, a, so we went to the show. <laughs> so it was a, they had a, a thing over at the ATO house, and we danced a little bit, and oh, we liked each other right away. So we just feel like that was a special, special thing that happened. Yeah, that was a God wink, no question. Yeah, yeah really. Well, our second date was just a couple of nights later. We went to the show. Well, again. yeah, he he told me, he said, well, "Would you like to go to the movies Friday night?" And so we went with this other couple. And uh, and he held my hand, and I went to sleep, but I didn't want to say anything. <laughs> and so we've been going steady ever since. Sixty-eight years later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh. we knew each other about two years before we got married. I had applied for Air Force cadets, and when I went out to the airport to sign up, there was quite a waiting list. So uh, the officer said, you should enlist now. Then we'll put you on the list and then we'll, we'll call you when you're ready, when they're ready. So I did that and uh, time went by and uh, then one day I got two big envelopes in the mail, both from the headquarters, saying that I had been accepted to cadets. And I signed this letter then send that in and get ready to report. Or I could turn it down. 
To the flight school. To a flight school. And <clears throat> so I, and it said on there that if I went to flight school back then, you couldn't get married for a couple of years, <laughs> a year and a half or two years. And I said, well, I better call Marilyn. So my Because here I was at home planning the wedding. The minute he, he had any uh, time, he was going to, we were going to get married. So my buddy Vern and I went to the phone and called and talked to Marilyn and decided to sign the one that I wouldn't accept, and uh, which was the, probably the greatest thing I ever signed. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, then I applied for Officer Candidate School, was accepted there. And that led to a whole new program again. Was assigned to the Army Language School in Monterey, California and to study Russian, and I'm not a linguist, so it was tough for me, but boy, we had small classes, six, seven guys, and all of our instructors were Russian-born. Most of them were taking English at night and teaching us Russian during the day. And boy, I squeaked, I just barely got through that class. I think there were 50 of, there were 50 of us that started 40 to graduate, and I think I was number 39, but I made it, that was, but uh, so that went, and then we went right to Oscar Cannon School. The other guys in that class all ended up in ADAC or other parts of Alaska where they were monitoring Russian radio calls. So I missed all that, so I didn't speak Russian. Now I can, I've got two words I can use, but anyway, uh, so that was quite an experience, and then we, at Officer Cannon School, when we traveled there to San Antonio, and we just had a few days to get there, and I couldn't get my travel money until after I got there. So we were, we bought a, in the meantime, we bought a car, and I use the term Lucy. <laughs> it was a 39 Plymouth, and it was, we put everything we owned in that car, and we had lots of room left. And we, Going across the desert, I woke Marilyn up that first night and said, we got to get going, that car's acting funny. We got to Kingman, Arizona on a Sunday afternoon, and here was a Ford garage wide open. I had never seen any garage open on a Sunday any time before that or time after that. And there was a young man there who I, I wish I and kept track of him. I know he's a, he was an angel because he had served in World War II and he came up and he said, well, Don, uh, I checked things over. And I said, well, what's this gonna cost? He says, how much money you got? I said, I think I had $35. We had to get to Texas yet. And he said, I, I think we can fix you up for about 1950. I don't, I know that I didn't even pay for the parts. This was a guy that God sent to help us on our way. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Then we get into San Antonio, Texas, <laughs> and it's midnight, and I see a big sign that said, Rooms, $2. I said, oh, that's for us. <laughs> <laughs> so I went to the night clerk. You know, in, in life it takes courage. Well, just plain old guts sometimes. I asked the night clerk, if he would loan me two bucks. <laughs> and uh, and I looked, he said, oh, Sonny, we can't do that. There's so many servicemen here. There's just no way. And I said, okay, uh, no problem. So I went out the car, opened the trunk, got our piggy jar. We couldn't afford a piggy bank. We had a piggy jar. Brought that in and dumped nickels, pennies, and dimes on the counter. And it, I looked up and Tears were coming down his streak. He said, oh, here, here's the two bucks. <laughs> you can pay me back when you get your travel money. Because you got to have something to eat, have money on to eat. So then I took Marilyn up to our suite. Now it's a suite because here's the room, and then down the hall is the utility. And But we made it. Well, and then we had the exciting news when we first got down there they said well you you won't be able to live together for six months like he's in training 
And so Don said, well, you better go home. And I went, no, I, I'll she be. She sat down on the trunk and cried. Now, it took me 30 years <laughs> to realize how effective her tears were. <laughs> but, it, but it really worked. And we found a, a nice apartment for her on an upper level. And she, and she got a job there. I got a job at an accounting firm, which, and it was tax time, so I was real busy. And I could go out and see him on Wednesday evening and Sunday afternoon, but no sign of affection. And I had to walk so many paces huh. behind him. <laughs> but you could dance, so we were dancing Sunday afternoon and and uh, Wednesday night. Wednesday night. But anyway, eventually, then he could come home on the yeah. weekends. But so that, we learned a lot. We, the main thing we learned. And a lot of people don't get this advantage today, I think. I learned you just have to do whatever you have to do to make it happen. You may not like it at first, but just keep doing it and things will get better. And that's the way our lives work out. Well, yeah. well, that was kind of a surprise because he was getting ready to go, you know, in the service. And so I, I was working in Portland and so I came home that night and I washed my hair and it was kind of just all, and the doorbell rang and here was Dawn. I went, oh my gosh. It was early in the evening and then later that evening when we were alone, he presented me with an engagement ring. So that was really exciting. Probably three months before we got yes. married. So that's why the phone call when he said, We'd have to delay it for two years because I was home planning the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was March 27th, 1951, and it was at First Emmanuel Lutheran Church, a church that I had grown up, grown up with, you know, since I was 10 years old. It was confirmed, and, and we, you know, we couldn't send out invitations, but the church was full with our friends and then, you know, members from the church that knew me from since I was a little girl. So it's wonderful. I just had one attendant because we, and I bar and my cousin loaned me her wedding dress because she had gotten married the year before. And then we got married on Tuesday and Don left on Thursday alone. And I had to follow him down to Monterey about two weeks later. So it wasn't kind of the, you know, what you planned, originally planned, but it worked. It worked. Yeah, we made it work. Yeah. That's that's the key. Is the church still in Portland? Right? Yes, it's on yeah. on um, uh, Northwest 19th and, 19th and Irving. And so it, it, I, and when we would, after we got married, if we came back to Portland, we that was a, one thing I always did, go down to church on Sunday and see all the members and, you know, that knew me. and. Yeah. That was pretty brief. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, we were over at the coast at, uh, uh, I'll remember the name of it. <laughs> yeah. But a real nice facility. We For said, one night. And then then the next one. So no, no, no. Yeah, because we got married on Tuesday and then we stayed in Portland that first night. Then we went oh, to the coast and stayed overnight Wednesday night. And then Thursday we had a... Uh, drive to Albany because they were going to pick up Don to take off for Monterey. in Seattle <laughs> and another one that they were they were driving down there and that I rode with them so uh, yeah that, amazing what you have to do. So Don's mother and my mother uh, two weeks later then uh, drove me down to Monterey. So, I mean we were making a hundred and sixty four dollars a month but my aunt had given us a hundred dollars for a wedding present. I so. told I told everybody I married Marilyn <laughs> for her money. <laughs> I, I can't believe that I wasn't more afraid. <laughs> but we, you know, it's interesting. Uh, we didn't owe anybody mm -hmm. anything. Mm -hmm. And in that short six months, we saved enough money to buy a car. And like I said, I used the term pretty loosely, but it. it it got us to where we had to go. So, uh, but then after getting, um, becoming an officer and the income increased and yeah, things really started taking another turn. Everybody loves Don, 
you know, and he's just a wonderful guy. And before I went to college, when I was kind of changing my mind, I went, you know, I might meet my husband there. In fact, I was kind of hoping I would. And so I know it was a God thing, because um, this is what came over me. And it said, you know, well, what do you want in a husband? Maybe you, you have to know what you're, you want. And so the two things that I required was the first thing, they had to know the Lord. And then the second one, that they would have a good relationship with their family, because I had one with mine. And that, so that was how I began. <laughs> well, Marilyn was a very loving gal, and, uh, and as we found out later, she's great in hospitality. She loves inviting people over. And that permeated around whoever we met. She just had a, just a natural, the, her relationship with, with people was great. And, uh, and oh, yeah, we, we, had, we both had a lot to learn because we didn't realize we both had tempers at that time. And, and, and I've often said, you know, the key at least to our successful marriage has been, we, most people understand what love is, but the interesting thing about love, it never stays steady on a line. It's always going like this, hills and valleys. But before we got married, we had a lot. We had developed a lot of respect for one another. Now, respect is something else. It's powerful. It does keep that line. And if you hold the respect for one another, the love will tag along with it. No question about it. But uh, yeah, we've learned a lot about ourselves. Still learning. It's amazing. Yeah, I didn't know that we could learn this much at this age. Well, I admire him most because he loves the Lord, and that is first in his life. And then, you know, it's you know he's just an honest person. He's just honest. And uh, it's what he says, you can always count on being the truth, which I love. Hmm. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I'm still learning. Yeah. 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 Well, and Marilyn has a multitude of attributes that are really helpful, not only to me and our family, but to other people. And we've been blessed by God with a great family. Just, <laughs> that's got to be the first in our lives. And as a result of that, we see some wonderful things happening, and they continue to happen. So we have much to be thankful for. And we're able to spend every morning for an hour or so, maybe two hours, in devotions and thanking God and uh, finding out more and more about about the Lord. And that is, that's more than a lifetime mission. Well, like I said earlier, I, we, uh, Don had been assigned to Tacoma, Washington, and we just got there. And then two weeks later, we, we went, we were assigned to Seattle. So we had, you know, we had a few more things that, you know, and so we found this darling house in Seattle, Washington. And as I was unpacking things, I was just so tired. I went, oh, I just, you know, want to lay down. Now, do you want me to tell that story? Okay. Yeah. And so I went, Don, you know, I think I, you know, I might be pregnant. Well, that week, it was a real rainy, stormy week, so I hadn't been outside but he had been outside earlier and had met the neighbors next door. So the following weekend, when he, on Saturday, when he saw them, they said, oh, you know, how, how's your wife? And he said, well, she's not feeling very good, but we think we know what's the matter. <laughs> and so when he came in to tell me that, I said, Don, we don't tell that people. That really made you excited. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I went, that's not, you know, we don't know for sure. So that's how... Well, us guys don't always say the right thing. Yeah. That's, that's for sure. 
Our first one was Carol Jane. So that her middle name is after me. And I just love the name Carol. Then we have David Lee. Yeah. And I no, I I'm not sure. Lee is for for yeah, that's for okay. my my middle name. I don't, I'm not sure how we came up with David. Uh, it's, my mind is not working right now, but uh, anyway, that was a blessing. And Marilyn couldn't believe that she was going to have a boy. Oh, yeah, I have my, I have to take heavy anesthetic because I had a cesarean. So I came out with, um, we um, I had Carol and then we had David and we kind of wanted a boy. So they, I got out of surgery and Dom was standing on one side and a nurse on the other and they said, it's a boy. And I went, I can't believe it. And I thought I said it and I was going, I can't believe it. And then I turned around, I can't, and I guess I just went off and off. And then Mark, Lewis, oh yeah, Lewis your is dad's, after uh, my dad's uh, name, yeah. And Mark is totally, made everything totally different on our child raising. And, um, you know, he just didn't think those rules for, was for him, but then he could always get out of anything he ever did. Because he, you know, he has a gift of language. And uh, so he, he was really fun to, to raise. He really was because, uh, you know, he, um, he could all, you know, he, you could have fun with him. Yeah, we had lots of good times together. I took the boys and a neighbor boy two years in a row up in the mountains and we hiked the Pacific Crest Trail. And that was before we had any fancy equipment or anything, but it was great. In fact, those boys enjoyed that so much that they do that now with their family. Well, that was a great time to kind of grow together and bond. And... I, I was part of the, you know, parents thing. And so one thing I did at the school was I dressed up like an Easter bunny and hopped into all the rooms. And the only thing, I got to the fourth grade and I taught Sunday school and this one boy recognized, he said, hi, Mrs. Eastford. But anyway, and so Mark was with me that day, and so he was going to be a first grader the next year, and the first grade teacher, she went, too bad he see, you know, she, I, you know, you're supposed to believe in bunnies, and he heard that, and he says, well, I don't believe in Santa Claus either, and she said, well, you've got to believe in Santa Claus if you're going to come up to the first grade and he says oh no I don't <laughs> and I went oh boy but he got along great with her really and because he was he was bold and wasn't phased by things but lots of things happened I remember there was at the dining room table one evening and I don't know what the situation was but I think Mark had one of those uh, automatic uh, uh, whipping cream thing. Whipping cream cans. David sitting right across from him. We we passed it to Mark. Oh, and then yeah. so Mark hit the button. And that same shaving cream went right across the table and hit David just like that. <laughs> it just really startled David. Well, startled all of us. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. And that time, time the boys were climbing a tree and back with the neighbor boys and Coming down, they uh, knocked down a, a bee nest or hornet, I don't know which Hornets. Was. And uh, they come running out of there, all got bit pretty good. And uh, at the back door, Merlin opened the door and undressed Mark. Well, I ran out there, and so David just kept running, but I took Mark and took his pants off. and. But David wouldn't let me. He wanted to get inside before he took his pants off. So, did Carol do anything? Was she uh, was she a funny kid at all? Uh, no, I wouldn't say Carol was funny. She 
she really, I mean, she could get the giggles or things like that, but. <laughs> she was a great, she was a great, yeah. <coughs> a great, yeah. Yeah, she was. She was just a real easy child, you know, to raise. And she. Never you know, complain. I'll never forget moving some furniture. And I put the end of the couch on her toe and she there with that on her, and she never said a word. Yeah. I finally realized, what are you doing? Yeah. And, <laughs> and there's a cute picture of when I had Mark, and she's holding it, holding Mark, and she's just like this. And then David's leaning against me, sucking his thumb, like, oh no, <laughs> who's it, what happened? <laughs> oh, it is so different. And no TV, you know, and... Um, yeah, you know, that was we, a blessing. And, right, and we, um, so you didn't know all the news every single minute, and and then, um, you know, the radio we watched, you know, listened to some, but, you know, not a lot. Not everybody, no one was, not everybody was carrying these little iPhones or whatever, and, and not able to correspond with, any, with anybody. Nowadays, it's, I really feel sorry, not just for the kids, but for a lot of old because a lot of people have become addicted to those things and it's not going to get any better. But anyway, it's, it's, we're learning to live this life, we're in it, but we're really looking forward to the next life. And none of this stuff will be around. I mean, I can't even imagine how our minds aren't capable of understanding how great that's going to be, but it is. So we have much to be thankful there. When I was in Coos Bay, when I first went down there, I, you know, I, my self-image, I guess, wasn't that good or something, but I kind of wanted to do everything to, you know, please and do things. And I started to play bridge, and I, I didn't know how, and I didn't take any lessons. And I belong to two bridge clubs, and some people really love it, and they're good, and and I I just didn't get it because I didn't study it, and so uh, but at that time I had um, chronic bronchitis. I mean, all the time. And one time I got viral pneumonia, and was in the bed for six weeks. And I had three little children. My mother came down, so sick, and I know my doctor like. You know, is she gonna? And he sent me up to Portland for some of this real rare test. Anyway, so we lived in this little house, crowded, and then we built a new house up on the hill. We had a, when we were in college, just going together, we said, someday we're gonna have a house on a hill with a view. And we did have a beautiful view in Coos Bay. And so at the time, I thought, you know what? I think I should kind of think about my life and what I'm doing and what is really important to me. And right away I thought, you know what, you don't like to play bridge. You know, you like the girls individually, but, and it was hard because, you know, it was a social thing and to tell them that I wasn't going to play bridge anymore. And at the same time, I read in the paper that uh, a, a stitchery artist was coming to the art museum to do a display and lesson. And I went, hey, I think I'll go down there. Well, this is what I love to do, to create with my hands and everything. And so I started doing all these things. And, and someone said, well, why don't you have classes? And I said, well, I don't know that much. And they said, well, you know more than we do. And I thought, well, I guess I do. I started teaching classes, and two other girls and I opened up this little darling shop called the Gingham House. And I have hardly had a cold since. It's so important to be the real you and not pretend to be somebody else. And so that was just life changing. I mean, like I say, that I know my doctor just, you know, he just kept just giving me the feeling that, you know, maybe I wouldn't make it, you know. And so, uh, like I say, I haven't had a cold since. And uh, I loved all the work and the people I met. And um, two of my favorite things was teaching Sunday school, fourth grade. I love fourth grade. 
and then teaching with the MOPS program, Mothers of Preschool Children. I did that for eight years, and those are my two favorite blessings in my life. There are so many, all the ministers I think of, Pastor Mick in Albany, uh, and Pastor Sudegren here in Portland, and, uh, and several others after that. Uh, but all along the way, there were people that would encourage you and uh, really help direct you. Of course, I love to think back now of all the hoodwinks that God has given us along the way. We thought they were accidents or coincidences. We didn't realize that God was directing us. It's amazing what they are, and they're great. And uh, because there were so many choices to make in life, and any one of them could change the direction of where you are or where you're going. And then one time, Marilyn and I, uh, are, when I worked for the Huggins office in Coos Bay, they went a trip by Safeco to Canada to, anyway, and uh, the manager of the firm said, oh, I've been there, I don't want to go. And next in line said, gee, if Bill didn't want to go, I don't want to go. And I, I said, hey, we'll go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we we took off. And it was really a great trip. And then at the, to try and shorten it up a little bit, I can't think of the guy's name that spoke to us. He used to be on the on the Wheaties boxes. And he was quite, Jack, a, Jack. quite an athlete. And uh, he said, you know, if you've got a dream or you want to have a business of your own or do something, really work on that, really think about it. And we did. All the way home we said, you know, we're going to have a business of our own. And just a few weeks later, uh, Andy came by me uh, and we, we would compete with one another in the business. And we met on the street one day and he said, Hey, Don, why don't we join forces? <laughs> so we did. And that was a great thing. It was tough because we didn't have the funds or whatever, but we managed to get by two years. Two years seemed to be the key in a lot of things. Because the two, first two years, people would meet Marilyn on the street and say, well, how are Andy and Don doing in that new business? Kind of giving it to us, you know? When two years went by and we start hitting these goals we had set, one after the other, nobody asked the question. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and we worked hard and it was very fruitful. But we got to go to a lot of neat seminars where we learned a lot about relationship with people and to succeed, what you want to do is help other people succeed first. That's one of the keys, and that worked. So we have, again, have lots to be thankful for. Yeah, and, and the opportunity I had to talk to these ministers, particularly Kinchu, I guess, and uh, others, but where they could really tell you about uh, some of the principles of life that have real value and meaning. And I know that those, they, it might not have been that obvious to me at the time, but they really carried through later on in life. And one of my favorite Bible verses is, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will direct your path. I think it was we had some challenges when I was pregnant with Carol in the delivery. Oh. And so when we knew she was okay. Yeah, the doctor he came to me. I was waiting out on a hard wooden bench and uh, he came out and he said, Don, I hate to tell you this, but we may have to make a choice between your wife or the baby. 
And uh, fortunately, I didn't know this. I didn't know this. Yeah. And so that's when God and I had a good, good mm -hmm. talk. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and then when when I went into the surgery, I didn't even think ever. I thought, and but just as, I was, as they pulled me away to put me in the surgery, I told Don, I think I'm going to die. And I guess I looked like it, you know, because I was white, and, you know. And so he went, oh, you look so good, you look so good, <laughs> when I got out. And then they just drove us by, you know, we, it's not like today, I mean, and we just went through the window and then, there's my baby right there. <laughs> you know. Yes, and the other, which I didn't realize till later, was uh, know, knowing the Lord. That had to be the greatest, but there had to be time involved that for really finding that out. Somehow I want to convey to the whole family what's the most important thing in our lives and want them to have a grasp on that too. I know what that'll mean for them. And my mother, she grew up in a very uh, religious home and loved the Lord and Lutheran church. And so uh, I guess when we were real little, uh, she didn't drive. So we went to a, to a, a, just a neighborhood church. But I think when I was about five or six, she decided we needed to be to the Lutheran church. And my dad, he didn't grow up in that in that same uh, influence, although later on he found the Lord and was very active in the church and everything. So we would take three streetcars to church every Sunday. And once in a while, this one member might give us a ride home, but he drove so wildly that we almost liked going on the streetcar. But anyway, my mother always, you know, that was her biggest desire, that she would have us learn about the Lord. And so I just appreciate that, that she just had that desire. I'm glad you mentioned that, because my folks were the same way. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> Dad was more quiet, but he taught me about integrity, to do what's right, and he taught me about hard work. It never hurts you, and you came from it. Mother the same way. Oh, lots of stories I could tell about the folks. My favorite Christmas story, I just love it. And that was before we got married. We had, and it was such a <clears throat> great event, helping another family. And we, it just came about, and my mother seemed to grasp, she, she, see, I'm a, can't think of the word. She just envisioned there was something going on with this, with these two buddies that came to school midterm, and we became great friends, great friends. And uh, I never, I never saw them at lunchtime, but we had recess together and all. One day I got sick, and our home was just a half a block from school. And the boys were concerned about me, so they asked the teacher what happened and she said well he just lives a half a block away so when they came over to see me and and mom had him come upstairs i was staying in the folks bed she didn't let him in the door she didn't want him to get what i had and we introduced and we talked and mom said boy come on down I'm a, i got some lunch going i got a <clears throat> chicken noodle soup and some she was a good cook. Huh? Yeah, she was, was some rolls, and they said, oh, no, no, we, they were very, very polite, nice. You got to know my mother. <laughs> you don't say no. Yeah. <laughs> and she took him downstairs, and pretty soon she came back up, and she said, Donnie, <laughs> that sounds so great, do you know anything about those boys? And I said, no, I don't. She said, well, they've each had two bowls of soup. And they're on their third roll each. Those boys are hungry. She said, when you go, get, well, I'll go back to school, I want you to invite yourself to their home. And that's kind of the, 
the beginning of the story. <clears throat> yeah. I'll never forget why. When I went out with them, I took my bucket, but it was several miles out to the Kalapuya River. And we walked down this dark lane in this dark house, and they had to, they had a little, tried to have a little fire in the fireplace and a little Christmas tree that they got together. And right away I saw the problem. Here was a great big husky man sitting in a chair. He had one leg in a cast, one arm in a cast. And they would go from town to town to work in the fields or whatever, you know. Went back home and told mom and dad, now you ask who's the best storyteller. You should have heard my mother. And she would elaborate on everything, uh, exercise it quite a bit, but, and she said, well, so she met with all the people, there were 29 employees in that store. And she talked to all of them about this. And you can't believe it. everybody that came to help, even the the butcher who had his own independent butchery shop there. Mom went and talked to him out of a turkey and the trimmings, and then picked up the necessary pans that she figured the lady would have to have. And we went through the whole store. Got we didn't use cardboard then; they used box crates for oranges, apples great boot and everything. We had two delivery trucks. My brother and I weren't old enough to drive them then. Dad drove one of them, Mom drove the other. And my brother found some dry firewood for the fireplace, loaded half of one truck with wood. Dad stopped at the ice plant to get a 50 pound keg of ice. Very few people had refrigerators in, so they, but we knew there'd be an ice box out on the back porch. And we just loaded the other rig with all kinds of goodies. We knew the manager of the Montgomery Ward next to our door. Mom and my sister went over and picked out presents for the little two sisters of the boys and for the other and the parents. And so we had some gifts to take them. And oh, I could think of all, but anyway, we took off. And I'll, I'll, well, I'll never forget, we uh, got to the door, met everybody, and this great big husky guy, tears were coming down his face. He was so excited. His family's now going to have something to eat. They're going to have a warm house to live in. My brother, brother got a nice fire going in the fireplace, and, and Doreen and all of us brought some uh, some decorations for the tree, and Mom took the lady of the house into the kitchen to make sure she had everything for a big meal. I mean, it was great. That house lit up like it was on fire. It was the joy of the Lord. And then we said, well, we better go. Let them enjoy this time together. So we got out on the porch, and we sang a couple of Christmas songs before we left. Mom and Dad were great singers, really were. And so we left. And I'll never forget going down that trail, looking back. That trail had gone from a dark trail and a dark house. It was lit up. And like I say, the joy of the Lord. We got back to the store to put the trucks away. It was dark. And the lights were on. We couldn't figure what was going on. We put the trucks away, walked in the back door. Almost every employee was there, wanted to hear the story. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and and Mom told them like uh, only she could. And it, so it was, that was a great, great time. And then Christmas vacation hit, and I didn't see the boys. I saw them briefly at school one day, and then the, Obviously, their dad got another job somewhere else and was healed enough so he could go to work. I always figured that if I told this story enough, somebody would hear it who knew that family. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that hasn't happened yet. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> well, I feel like we, I've had a wonderful life. I mean, God has blessed us. 
Well, he blessed me well with a wonderful mom and dad and bro older brother and cousins and aunts and uncles. And then my church that, that you know, was behind me the whole time and, and my close friends, the minister's daughter was one of my best friends. And then I met Dawn and we had a wonderful family and it just keeps growing and growing. And, uh, and you know, I we just had a wonderful life, a lot of great experience. You know, sometimes, you know, hard things to go through, but, uh, you know, we just have met so many wonderful people and been well, blessed. That's what life is, a series of hills and valleys. Yeah. And we learn a lot more from our valleys than our hills. Yeah. Thank you for yeah. letting us share. Right. Huh? It's kind of fun to go back and think about things. So many, yeah. That's another one of the big blessings. We got so many memories. In fact, some nights a while back, I, I start to get to sleep and then I started thinking of all these neat memories. <laughs> You could stay up all night just thinking about that, you know. But it's great. 